together again. Put your hands together. Come on, help us, Steve. You brought me to this. Um, you brought me to that. Hey, Lord, I'm grateful, yes I am, to you. Come on, say it again. You brought me through this, um, you brought me through that. Hey, Lord, I'm so grateful, yes I am, If you see the words on the screen, you. come on, help us. Come on, help me say it. Come on, say he brought, he brought me. me you sound yeah. beautiful. He must have did it. He brought me through that. Yeah. Lord, I Yes, I am. Yes, I am to you. Come on, with him, boy. He brought me through. You brought me through that. Um, he brought me through that. Yeah. Yes, I am to you. You made a way, yes, you did, out of no way. Hey, Lord, I'm so grateful. Yes, I am to you. You opened doors, yes, you did. That were closing my face. Oh Lord, Lord, I'm so grateful. Yes, I am to you. Come on, Soprano, let me hear you say it. You brought me through this. Yeah. You brought me through that. You brought me through that. Lord, I'm so grateful. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Come on, let's say it again. He brought, he brought me to this. Oh, Lord. He brought me to that. He brought me to that. Lord, I'm so grateful. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am to you. If you're a soprano, come on, help us. Yeah. Yes, he did. Grateful to you, Lord. You brought me to that. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful to you, Lord. Come on, tell us, let's show them how to do it. You brought me through this. You brought me through this. You brought me to that. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to you, Lord. Everybody sing it. He brought, you brought me to this. Um, you brought me to that. Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am. Grateful to you, Lord. To you. Come on, give him a hand, clap of praise.
Go on, put your hands together. You ask me. Oh, sign me up. Sign me up. Write my name. On the road. I've been trained. I've been trained. Since the Lord has left me. I want to be. Oh, when Jesus come, the trump will sound out loud. Oh, my Savior come, all the saints in the Christ shall rise. I'm glad I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Sign me up. We're here, present and accounted for. I, it is glad, I am glad to see all of you this morning. It is so good to be at the land of the living this morning. My goodness, God has been so good. I tell you, I said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. And what that means is that everything that's in me has to bless the Lord. Arthritis, you gotta bless the Lord. Gout, gotta bless the Lord. Backache, gotta bless the Lord this morning. Headaches, gotta bless the Lord. Everything within us, gotta bless the Lord this morning. For he is worthy to be praised. I am happy to be here with all of you this morning. This is our worship time. We are so excited. The choir is getting us all started up. Thank the Lord for the choir this morning. Oh my goodness, we don't even know it's raining outside because it's warm in here. The presence of the Lord is here this morning. I can feel him in the atmosphere. Oh, we thank God for worship that we woke up this morning. Many people, their bed became their cooling board, but that was not our case. We got up this morning that we can come and worship the Lord together in spirit and in truth. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, the place where God has ordained for us to worship him. This is good. Our ancestors down through the years prepared a place that we can come and that we can worship him. And we're glad about it. We are, we are truly those that, uh, that love God that we know the goodness of his, his glory. And so I am grateful to be in the house of the Lord with you that we can corporally worship. This is worship time this morning. So let us prepare our hearts and minds to pray and to receive God. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we are truly glad and thankful, Lord God, to be here. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you have already met us here. You said, well, two or three are gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst. We feel you in the presence, Lord God. We feel your presence in the midst of us this morning. Father, we are grateful to be here, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we embark you to have your way this morning, Lord God. God, move the way you want to move, Lord God. Stir up the gifts that you place within us, Lord God, that we would give you glory, that we would give you honor, and we give that we would give you praise as do your name. Father, we thank you for this um, opportunity. We thank you, Lord God, for this for this ordained time, Lord God, to worship you. Father, I pray for the choir, that they would continue to praise you, Lord God. I pray for this congregation who have made their way out, Lord God, that's pressed their way, Lord God, out to be um, in corporate worship this morning. I pray for the word. I pray for our pastor, that he would bring the word, word with boldness and clarity yeah, yeah. this morning. And Father, I pray for that's us, your man, people, bro. that we will receive the word. For you said faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we we thank you, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. This is what we're going to be doing when we're up there with the Lord. Oh, sign me up. Sign me up. Oh, I tell you, I've been changed. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. You know not the day nor the hour when he shall appear. But when we know in our hearts that he's coming back again, my heart is fixed and my mind made up. I want to be ready when Jesus come. Amen, amen, amen. This morning we're going to do our scripture and then we'll have our congregational hymn. Our scripture will be found in St. John's this morning, the third chapter, verses 16 and 17. This is also pastor's text this morning. So if you go ahead and get there, you'll be there when he's there. Amen, amen. amen, amen. St. John's, the, the third chapter, starting at the 16th verse, and it reads, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The word of the Lord for the world. All right, choir. Come on with our congregational hymn. Will you please stand and join the choir for the congregational hymn?
transition. talking about holding on to God's unchanging hands. That's that's a message right there. That'll preach. Hold to God's unchanging hands. I'm reminded, it says, Lord, I stretch my hand all the help I know. 
Lord God, we got to hold on to his hands and not let go. That's a good one. Oh, I feel like we're in church this morning. I feel like we're in church this morning. Every part of the worship service is an experience that speaks to our heart. And that right there spoke to bring us, to give us hope that we can hold to his unchanging hands. I know it's offering time. That's another part of um, our opportunity to participate in worship. I want to say that to thank you to all those who participated in the in the tree, the angel tree, and um, donate the clothes. Um, God says that if we want to be blessed, you pay your tithes and your, well, God didn't say it. But if you want to be blessed, you pay your tithes and offering. If you want more, you give to the poor. And the Lord will give it back to you. And so we appreciate you participating um, with the home missions in those opportunities to give to the needy, for that's a part of what we as Christians are to do. And so when the missions do that, we all do that. We all have a part in that. And so that's a blessing that it may not yet appear what we are doing but we are doing big things here people are being blessed by Carrie's Baptist Church and we just thank you for that so it's offering time so if if we have all given our offering if you've given it online we thank you for that for those who put it in the box we thank you for that those who still want to give the text the, what you can do to give online will be up there so we're grateful for that so now we'll pray all right Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this time to give. We thank you, Lord God, that we're that you have blessed us and that we're able to give. Father, we pray for everyone that has given, Lord God, that has purpose in their heart to give back, Lord God, that there may be meat in your house. You said that you would open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that we won't have room enough to receive. And so, Father, we thank you, for we are believers of your word. We know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask the thing. So we thank you, Lord God, for the mission of this house. We thank you for the good stewards, Lord God, that you have placed, Lord God, to represent you here. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praises in Jesus' name. All things. Amen. We thank you, Rushers. Okay, before I take my seat, we will all, this is you, as you know, this is Advent season, and um, for many, um, this, is the, this is the beginning of the spiritual year for the church, for many churches celebrate Advent, and so it is our custom here at Carries that we also um, recognize Advent, and that we have an Advent reading, and we light our candles to show that and so advent the word advent we know is the coming of something the event so we anticipate just over 2,000 years ago when they were anticipating the birth of Christ Lord our Savior we too now even um, anticipate the second coming of Christ and so we're excited about it so we have a special um, um, Kara Lucas, Miss Lucas will come and read our second uh, week of Advent. For we are able to have, um, we are able to have hope. We're able to have peace. We're able to have joy, and we're able to have love because God so purposed over those two thousand years ago that He had a plan for us as believers that we will be saved and that we have a Messiah. And so she's going to do us justice by reminding us of the second week Amen. right now. Good morning. Good morning. For the second week in Advent, we focus on peace. In John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the birth of our Prince of Peace, we ask that you reveal yourself to us today. We need peace in our lives, our homes, our families, our church, and our whole world. These are chaotic times in which we live today. Help us, to, help us to slow down, learn to compromise, and seek out the peace you provide. Help us to become peacemakers for ourselves and others. We ask this in your name, Jesus, Prince of Peace, Amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for that reading. And as we already said, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. And we are not only want to be hearers of the word, but we want to be doers of that word. So as we reflect this week on peace, even the Bible, uh, God told us to pray for peace in Jerusalem. We know that there's a lot going on and the second coming is near. And so we want to pray for peace in Jerusalem and we want to be reminded of that we can have hope and that we can have peace because God has already made the plan in the Messiah that we are saved, redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm going to turn it over to the choir and then pastor's going to come. Y'all know I talk a lot up here because I'm excited and that, you know, when we get the opportunity to be up here, I got to say some things because I don't get the opportunity. Well, I've been up here a lot lately, but um, when I'm up here, I want to be able to say some things, so I'm excited. Good morning, everyone, again. If you didn't hear me say good morning to you, I'm stopping now to say good morning. How many out there love Jesus? See, that's an opportunity. If I wasn't playing the piano and didn't have, have my hands, I'd have my hands up and say, Jesus, I love you because you care. Not because I've been so faithful Not because I've been so good You always been there for me Slide it all my knees You were there when I was lonely You were there in all my pain Guiding my footsteps, shelter from the rain. And it was you who made my life complete. You are to me my everything, and that is why I sing. Jesus, I love you because you can. No, I couldn't imagine. Oh, if you weren't there. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Oh, yes, I love you, Jesus. Because you can, I couldn't imagine. If you weren't there. You are the source of my salvation. You're the peace in my storm. Your loving arms protect me, shelter me from harm. You're the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, my strong tower, my dearest and best friend, and it was you who made my life complete, you are to me my everything, and that is why I sing. Jesus, I love you. And you know, I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Oh, 
yes, I love you, Jesus. Because you care. I couldn't imagine if you were there. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Yes, Jesus, I love you. Because you can, I couldn't imagine if you were there. Jesus, I love you. Yes, Jesus, I love you. Because you care, and I couldn't imagine if you were there. Oh, come help me say it. Come help me say it. Yes, yes. You've been so good to me for all the things you've done for me. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes, yes. For your grace and mercy, Lord. For your love and kindness. Not just because of what you've done for me, but because of who you are. Oh, yes, I love you, Jesus. All the things you've done for me. How you set me free. Yeah. For your grace and mercy oh yes for your love and your kindness not just what you've done for me but because of who you are oh jesus i love you i love you i love you i love you yes i love you i love you yes Yes, I love you. You are the world to me. Yes, I love you, Jesus. Yes, you are the greatest, Lord. Yes, because, 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 because you. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. That song was because we love Jesus because of what he did for us on the cross. Can I get a witness? Amen. Jesus, Jesus, 
Oh, what a wonderful child. I'm talking about Jesus. Mary's baby. So lowly, meek and mild. Well, new life, new hope, new joy he brings. Listen, listen to the angels sing. Glory, glory, glory to the new, the newborn king. He was heralded by the angels. Born in a lowly manger. God chose Mary for his mother and Joseph for his earthly father. Well, three wise men traveling from afar were guided by that shining star to see Jesus, Jesus, where he laid in a manger full of hay. Yeah, Jesus, 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 oh, what a wonderful I'm talking about Jesus, my Savior, so lonely, meek and mild. New life, new hope, new joy he brings. Listen to the angels sing, glory, glory, glory to the new world. To the newborn king, yeah, he was heralded by the angels. He was born, born in a lowly manger. God chose Mary for his mother, and earthly for his earthly father. Well, three wise men traveling from afar. They were guided by that shining star to see Jesus, Jesus, where he laid in a manger full of hay. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child talking about Jesus, our Savior. So lonely, meek and mild, yeah, new life, new hope to all he brings. Listen to the angels sing, glory, 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 glory. Newborn King, yeah, Jesus, 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 oh, what a wonderful child, talking about Jesus, Jesus. Savior, Jesus. so lowly, meek and mild, new life, new hope, new joy he brings. Listen to the angels sing Glory, glory, glory To the glory, glory, glory Glory, glory, glory To the newborn King all the people said amen. amen we praise God again this morning for another opportunity for another day but truly this is the day the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad with it come on clap your hands this morning if you believe that amen let's have a word of prayer amen father we're grateful Lord we're thankful again that you have brought us to this place place of freedom a place Lord God where we can come in and give you the honor 
and give you the glory and the praises, God, with no embarrassment and no shame. Thank you, Lord God, for you said it's now time for your people to worship you in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Father, we come this morning just to say thank you. Lord, you watched over us all week long in the midst of heartaches and pains, in the midst of challenges, Lord God. You gave us the strength and the wisdom to overcome it. And so, Lord, we don't come for any shape, form, or fashion, but we come today, God, just to give you the honor and give you the praises. We thank you for purpose, Lord God, for you said in your word, God, upon this rock you would build your church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. God, you have called the church to be a place of purpose. And Father, every time we come into this place, our ears are open, God, to hear a word from you that you would help, Lord God, line us up and take us in the right path that you've called us out in. Thank you, Lord God, for the anointing. For it is the anointing that destroys the yoke, Lord God, and supply all of our needs, God. And so, God, we don't stand on our own this morning, God, but we stand because you bought us with a price, Lord God, before the foundation of the earth. You said even when we were yet sinners, you already had made a way, Lord God, that we would stand on this day and to proclaim and, and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, Father God, I pray less of me and more of you, God. I pray, Lord God, that you hide me behind the cross. I lift up your sheep this morning, God. For those, Lord God, who are in need to hear your voice, Lord God, you said your sheep, they know your voice. And a stranger, they shall not follow. So, God, I pray that everything that you placed on the inside of me, Lord God, out of my bellies, Lord God, let it flow rivers of living water, Lord God, that your people would be fed today. Every void place would be filled. Every question would be answered. But most of all, God, they would have a comfort in knowing that you that begun a good work in them, you will fulfill it until the day of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask you to speak in this place today. Speak to our hearts. Encourage our hearts to let us know that God is God and beside him there is none other. Father, I pray that there, if anyone would hear this message is not born again, has not allowed you to become Lord and Savior, God, that you would arrest them wherever they're at. That God, they would throw up their hands and say, Father, what must I do to be saved? And I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that as they confess and believe, you would fill them with your power. You fill them with your love. You fill them with your deliverance, Lord God, that they would know without a shadow of a doubt, God, that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and the world and they that dwells therein. And we give your name the glory, the honor, the praises. We thank you for it. We count it done, God. It is so. And we believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands this morning. Well, we praise the Lord again for another opportunity, for another day. For another opportunity to come into this place and worship God with you. Amen. I'm worshiping God with you. Amen. We'll worship together this morning together with you. Amen. Your God is my God. He's the same God. Amen. You yield to the same God I yield to. And I praise God that God has given us a body of believers around us. Amen. That's with us that we can worship our God in spirit and in truth. How many know this morning that whatever you need, God has it? Amen. Whatever you need this morning, God has it. And he says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find and knock and the door would be open. He says that in his word. And saints of God, I promise you, if we take him at his word and we believe by faith, there is no weapon that's formed against us will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us, it shall be the vow. And so we praise God for this morning. We thank God for our wife, the First Lady. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for this morning. Amen. Thank you, First Lady. Amen. For your 
diligence, amen. She says she's been up here quite a many times for the last few Sundays, but praise the Lord, amen. We praise God for that, amen. I can promise you going forward, the schedule has been made, amen. You won't be up here as much, amen. So praise his holy name, amen, <laughs> amen. Thank God for you, Reverend Staten and Reverend DeBro, amen. Praise God for your presence this morning. We thank God for our deacons, amen, for all our deacons in the, in the room. Thank God for our trustees. We're honored, amen, by our urchers this morning. Thank God for our media ministry. Thank God for the choir. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for the choir this morning. We thank God most of all for you, amen. I want to thank God, amen, for the Lucases, amen, for your diligence with your children, amen. You know, as your, as your young man came last Sunday and your daughter came this Sunday, amen, we know we praise God for the children, but you got to praise God for the parents because if it wasn't for the parents, the children would not be doing what they're doing. And as old-fashioned as it may be, people don't believe, amen, your two children is a step of, ahead of many other children. Why? Because they have parents that's bringing them up in the household of faith. Children that grow up in the household of faith, a true household of faith, they are normally a step ahead of other kids. Why? Because they have a God on their side and they're confident in knowing. And I pray that I can live to see these two young kids grow up. Because I'm telling you, they're going to do great things in the earth we live in. Because they have parents that are raising them the right way. Hey, saints, let me tell you something, amen. As old-fashioned as people may think it is, you cannot go wrong by raising your kids up the way the Lord has ordained you to raise them. I was in the store yesterday. I was in the store yesterday. I went down to Kroger's to get me some Simon. I want to eat some Simon, amen, yesterday. And while I was in Kroger's, I watched this young lady tell her son three or four times not to move. Little boy just jumped up and moved all over the place. And they were sitting in the middle of the store just fussing. The mama and the son. The boy was no more than six years old. And they were sitting in the store fussing. And I walked out of, <laughs> out of that store saying, thank God for parents that believe in God. Because when your child fusses at you as a child of God, you smack them in the face. Amen. Right now. That's what you do. Right now. Amen. You smack them in the face. With the word. Amen. See, I got you, right? I got you. You smack them in the, in the face with the word. Y'all thought I was talking about physical slapping. No. You slap them in the face with the word. <laughs> you smack, slap them in the face with the word. Amen. First, not, not physically. Amen. Spiritually. And so we praise God this morning for parents that will slap their children in the face with the word because the Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father, and thy days will be long upon the land. Now, you know, I know a lot of young people, amen, when I was growing up there, passed on. And the majority of those young people that passed on, they did not honor their parents. They did not honor their parents. Parents tell them don't go when they go and they get killed. Parents tell them to do when they don't do. They find themselves in jail. It has not changed, saints, amen. As much as we want to blame it on society, it's not society, it's called parenting. And when parents are not involved with their children, with God, you can choose to understand that that child is sometimes going to go off on the deep end because they have not been trained the right way. So Lucas is God bless y'all. Amen. God bless y'all. Continue on being the example in the hour we're living in and let other parents see how you raise your children in the Lord. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning for that. Amen. You're already amen at St. John, the third chapter. Yeah. 16th, 17th verse. First lady has already placed it out there this morning. We're going to talk about the gift of grace this morning. That's what we're going to talk about this morning, the gift of grace. My brothers and sisters, many would identify December as a month of commercialism or a season emphasizing a time when the vendor gains profit. December can be a very, very stressful month for many people because the world in which we live in as much as we say we, we celebrate the birth of Christ, many times it's not about that. 
often ask myself if we are celebrating the birth of Christ, why is it when you go to some of the secular parties that we go to, meaning like sometime our squadron will have a party, and more alcohol is consumed during that time than ever before. How can we say that we are celebrating the birth of Christ? Come on, y'all with me. Amen. And so when we think about that this morning, as born-again believers, December is no different than January. Because as a believer, we are always celebrating his birth, his resurrection, and his death. As a believer... We think about giving. Giving is a part of what we do every day. Whether we're giving a gift, whether we're giving monetary means, we're giving something every day. I know I do, amen, every day of my life. I'm giving something to someone, whether I'm praying for them, or whether I'm listening to them, or whether I am sharing advice with them, I'm giving them something that they will be edified in the things of God. And we think about that this morning, Jesus came with an ultimate gift. His gift was, when he came upon the earth, he came to give a gift called grace. Now, all of us know this morning that grace is that unmerited favor, meaning that God comes, amen, when Jesus comes in our lives, he places favor on our situations that he may be glorified. When we think about that, amen, and look at the book of Luke, we know that when Jesus came on the scene, he came, amen, in the voice of an angel. And the angel tells, amen, these shepherds when they was out in the field, he says, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings and great joy which will, you, which will be for all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, whom, who is the Christ the Lord. Jesus, God sends an angel with a message about the gift of grace. And the purpose of his birth was that he would bring grace to those individuals in times of need. And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, amen. I praise God for the gift of grace. Because if it had not been for the grace of God, where would I be? Maybe that's not your story this morning. Maybe you came out of the womb, saved. Maybe you were sanctified. Maybe you've done everything in the earth, amen, that you should do. But I came out of the womb, born into iniquity and shaped into sin. Out of my mother's womb, amen, I came as a sinner. And it was Jesus Christ that saved me and set me free. Are y'all with me this morning? When we look at the life and the character of Jesus, he came to give the gift of grace. The gift of grace is identified as a benefit to those who accept Christ as their Savior and their Lord. The best gra grace is that God purchased our freedom with the blood of, from the Lamb. And this, amen, gives us the ability that we can now say that we are born again and we are filled with the Spirit of Christ. As we think a look, take a look at it this morning, we ought to get excited. Not, amen, because what we've done, but we ought to be excited because Jesus gave us the, gift, the, the gift of grace that now we can run and not get weary and walk and not faint. That's why Paul says in the scripture, Paul says in 2 Corinthians the 12th chapter, the 9th verse, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. I wonder if I have anybody in the room this morning. So, Pastor, every now and then I get weak. Amen. Every now and then I get feeble. But when you get weak and get feeble, you need to understand that God's grace is sufficient. And, for, and, 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 and you need to understand, amen, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Every now and then, this world in which we live in will cause us sometimes to feel like we're overbearing, amen, and feel like we can't make it. But we've got to understand that God has given us the gift of grace, and when he gives us that gift, we're able to continue on moving forward in the things of God. In our text this morning, Jesus is having a conversation with Nicodemus. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, and he comes to Jesus with a question wanting to know how can a man be born again? 
He wanted to understand, amen, from a natural standpoint, is it possible for a man to go back in his mother's womb? But Jesus tells this man, amen, it says, unless you are born of the spirit, amen, you shall not see the kingdom of God. Well, when Nicodemus come to Jesus, amen, Nicodemus come with a, a query, or he comes with a question because he's honest and wants to understand how can, he underst how can he understand that grace is on his side. And Jesus directs Nicodemus and tell him, amen, amen, the flesh and blood has not a, did this to you, but amen, unless you're born of the spirit and born of, of, the, of, 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 of the Holy Ghost, you shall not see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus, amen, now is at a place in his life. When Jesus presents this to him, he's got to make a choice. Saints of God, do you not know every now and then when you have a conversation with God and God gives you a rhema word, that rhema word now is for you uh, to see if you're going to walk by faith and not by sight. That's why it's very important, amen, when you sit down and talk to God and you say God gives you this revelation and God gives you, amen, this vision. Now, amen, you got to make a choice if you're going to walk, amen, after the things of God or you're going to just hear his word and not move forward in God. Are y'all with me this morning? So Nicodemus is at a point in his life. Where Jesus now is trying to take him to a new dimension or trying to take him to a new level. And saints, can I tell you something? Amen. God is a God about going forward. Never be afraid to go forward in God. If God has ordained it, amen, God will sustain you in it, amen. If God opens the door, amen, he will hold your hand while you go through the door, amen. If God, amen, gives you the ability, amen, he'll give you, amen, the opportunity to use the ability that he gives to you, amen. You should never be a person, if God is moving you forward, that you don't go forward in him. Are y'all with me this morning? So there are a few things I want to show you this morning about this gift of grace that Jesus is trying to show Nicodemus why it's so important to have the gift of grace. The first point, if you're taking notes this morning, the gift of grace is uncommon. Yes, it's uncommon. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor? Amen. The, when I say uncommon, it's not ordinary. It don't function like everybody else would function. It does not do the things like everybody else do. Look at, amen, at St. John, the third chapter, 16th, that first part of the verse. The Bible said, Jesus said it this way, For God so loved the world he, that he gave his only begotten son. Stop right there. So grace is uncommon because it, it, it is what God gives. And grace, amen, when it comes, amen, grace, amen, is uncommon because it does the opposite of what the world would do. The word of God said, for God so love. We know that love, amen, has many different meanings. Agape, which is unconditional love, amen. We know that not agape, but philia, philia is brotherly love, amen. And eros love is love between a husband and a wife. Are y'all with me this morning? But in this particular setting, amen, Jesus is trying to show Nicodemus that the gift of grace is uncommon. Why? Because God loves the world, but the love world don't love God back. Are y'all with me this morning? Are y'all with me this morning, saints of God? And as a born-again believer, there are gonna come a time in all of our lives when we're operating in the gift of the gift, the gift of grace that you're gonna love somebody and they're not gonna love you back. Are y'all with me? That's why we gotta understand, amen. When God gives us that grace. We're going to do things that's uncommon that the world would do. Are y'all with me? So he tells Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. He gave his son. And I don't know if anybody in the room this morning, amen, it would it be very hard if you only had one child. And you gave that child away to, to die for the sins of the world. That's uncommon, saints of God. Amen. Jesus, amen, was the only child, amen, that God had that he gave away that he would die for the sins of the world. And I don't know about you. I praise God this morning. But when God puts me in that situation where I'm, I have to do something uncommon, that he gives me the strength to do it because he's God and beside him there is none other. That's why Paul says in Romans, the fifth chapter. 6, 7, and 8th verse, he says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for your ungodliness. He says, For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps 
for a good person one would dare even to die. But God showed his love for us even while we were yet sinners. Christ still died for us. That's uncommon, saints. Amen. All of us know this morning in the room, amen, in our flesh. Amen. We only sometimes in our flesh do what's right to people that do what's right to us. But that's why as a child of God, you can't operate in your flesh, saints. Amen. Because if you operate in your flesh, you will never do anybody any uncommon thing because everybody's out to hurt you in the flesh. Are y'all with me this morning? And so Jesus says this morning, the first thing you need to understand that the grace of God or the gift of grace is uncommon, meaning that he's going to go above and beyond your situation to let you know that he's a God who loves you. Amen. He's going to go above and beyond your situation to let you know that he's on your side. He's going to go above and beyond your situation to let you know that he is God and beside him there is none other. Second point we see right here in the same verse is not only the, the grace, the gift of grace is uncommon, but the gift of grace is unconditional. Amen. Unconditional means, amen, it's not subject to a condition. The second part of the verse, he says right here, he says, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So when we look at this this morning, amen, Amen. It's unconditional because he says in the word, amen, Mrs. McIntosh, he says, the whosoever, as long as you believe, it's unto you. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. That brings all of us in the room that we're all on the same sheet of music. Amen. We're all on the same page with God. Amen. It makes no difference. Amen. How long you've been in the church. Amen. It makes no difference. How long you wrote, you, you served in your role. As long as you are the whosoever that believes. Amen. It's, amen. It's subject to you. Are y'all with me this morning? So he shows us right here in the scripture. He says that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And I wish I had one or two people in the room this morning that you, amen, sometimes feel like you don't fit in. But can I tell you something this morning? If you believe, you're part of the whosoever, amen. If you believe that God is God and beside him there is none other, you are, amen, you fit in because God said, the whosoever believe, you shall not perish but have eternal life. That's why he says in Galatians, the third chapter, the 28th verse, he said, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free. There is, he says, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. Pastor, how am I one? Because I'm the whosoever, and I believe in God, amen. No, it makes no difference what side of the track I come from. Makes no difference how my parents was and how my parents are not. As long as I believe in God, the promise belongs to me. Are y'all with me this morning, amen? As long, as, amen, as I look to the hills which come with my help, amen, the promise belongs to me. Are y'all with me? Jesus tells this guy, Nicodemus, the gift is not only, amen, uncommon, but it's unconditional. Meaning that there is nothing in the room that you and I can do that will cause God not to love us. Come on, can you just look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, encourage him, say, neighbor, there is nothing you can do that will cause God not to love you. Somebody need to hear that this morning, amen, because somebody, amen, walked in the room thinking that you did something so bad that God don't love you. But can I tell you something this morning? There is nothing that you and I can do, amen, that will cause God, God not to love us. Why? Because we are the whosoever that believeth. And as long as we are the whosoever that believeth, we shall not perish, but we shall have eternal life. Come on, Peter. Amen. Peter, 1 Peter 5 and 10 says, And the God of all grace, who calls you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. That's what Peter says. Peter says, When you have suffered a little while, 
Will him himself, amen, restore you and make you strong and firm and steadfast? I wish I had one or two people in this room this morning would just understand that God is going to make you strong, amen. He's going to make you firm and he's going to make you steadfast, amen. He's going to make you strong, amen. He's going to make you firm and he's going to make you steadfast. Why, pastor? Because I am in the whosoever crowd, amen, and I believe God. Are y'all with me this morning? Oh, I'm preaching to myself this morning because this makes me happy. Amen. Amen. I don't have to be in the, in the upper escalon of the preachers. All, in, all I got to be is a whosoever that believes. And as long as I believe that God is going to make me steadfast and strong and firm. Are y'all with me this morning? Last point that Jesus tell Nicodemus about this gift called grace. He says, listen, not only is it unconditional. But he says that the gift of grace, this Carol, is uncompromising. Amen. It's uncompromising. It shows a willingness to make everybody involved. How do you know that? Right in the 17th verse, look what the scripture says. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But in, it, it, but in, in order that he, the world may be saved through him. So the gift of grace, Brother Willie J, is uncompromising because this gift comes not to condemn, but to save. Are y'all with me this morning? Everybody in the room needs to understand that when Jesus came, he didn't come to condemn us. Pastor, what do you mean when you say condemn? Condemn means to judge you at a lower state. But when Jesus came in the earth, he came to save us. Are y'all with me? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus came not to condemn me, but to save me. Yeah, he came to save us. And so the gift that God gives us in grace is uncompromised. That's why Paul says in Romans, the eighth chapter, first and second verse, he said, therefore, there is no now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Are y'all with me this morning? Let me read that one more time. He says, there, therefore, there is no condemnation, amen, for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's the whosoever crowd. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life have set you free from the law of sin and death. And I wish I had one or two people in the room this morning that you would just raise your hand and say, I thank God, amen. I've been set free, amen, from the law, amen, of sin and death. I've been set free from the law of sin and death. And now I'm made free, ain't God, are y'all with me? So it's uncompromising, first lady, amen, meaning that no matter what we do, no matter how we say it, he still says in the word, I sent my son, not to condemn the world, but I sent my son in order that the world may be saved through him. Now think about this, saints, saints of God. We know how the world marks God. We know how the world makes fun of God. But Jesus still reminds us that God's love is uncompromising. No matter how much the world marks God, and no matter how much the world makes fun of God, and no matter how much the world speaks ill of God, God's love is uncompromising. And I don't know about you, I praise God I'm on the whosoever side, amen. I'm on a side, amen, that no matter what I do, amen, no matter how I say it, he still loves me. Because, amen, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Are y'all with me this morning? You may ask the question, I want, to, I, want to, I want to hold on to this scripture. Because you may ask the question in the scripture when I looked at it. I thought about this, Reverend Staten, amen, that Jesus, if Jesus don't come to, feel, to make us feel guilty, who comes to make us feel guilty? Because the word of God said that God did not send his son to condemn us. Meaning anybody trying to condemn you, they're trying to make you feel guilty. Have you ever had anybody in your life to try to condemn you, to make you feel guilty, to keep you up on their thumb, amen, to keep control over your life? Well, can I tell you something this morning? Amen. If God did not come to condemn you, somebody came. It must be Satan. Amen. The word of God says, Revelation 12 and 10 says, says Satan was the brother of all accusers. Amen. And he accused the brother 
day and night. Amen. And can I, amen, set you free this morning, saints of God. I don't care what the enemy is trying to bring in your life. He's trying to bring, remind you over and over again of what you did in your past. But can I tell you something this morning? That Jesus did not come, amen. The Son was not sent to the world to make you feel guilty, but the Son was sent in the world to set you free, amen. I praise God this morning that I understand, amen, the purpose of the gift, amen, of grace, amen. Gift of grace came is un compromising, amen. I mean, there's nothing I can do, amen, that will cause me, amen, to lose faith with God. Well, pastor, what are you trying to tell us this morning? Well, all I'm trying to tell us this morning, saints of God, let us stay focused in the month of December, amen. Don't allow yourself, amen, to get, amen, all focused, to realize we as a born-again body of believers, it's not how much we give, amen, but it's how much we worship him. It's how much we believe, amen. As long as we believe in God, he's able to do exceedingly a Abundantly above all we're able to ask or think through the power that worketh in us. Amen. All God is trying to tell us this morning to stay focused on him. Amen. Whether it be December or whether it be July. Amen. Stay focused on him because he came. Amen. Because he loved the world and he gave his only begotten son. Amen. And he came. Amen. Not to condemn the world but the world would be set free. And I don't know about you this morning. Say, I praise God. Amen. That I have the gift of grace in my life and there is nothing I can do. Amen. That calls is, amen, God not to do an uncommon thing in my life. There is nothing I can say, amen, that calls God to, to show me unconditional love. But most of all, amen, there is no place I can go, amen, that God, amen, will be uncompromising. God is the same God, whether I'm in the building or outside the building. He's, amen, a God who's able to do everything but fail. And you ought to be excited this morning, saints of God, because it's not by power, it's not by might. It's by the word of God that saves you. I praise God this morning for the cross. Amen. Why, Pastor? Because it was at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light. And all the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And all my days are happy now. Why, Pastor? Because I met a God who, amen, moves and operates in the uncommon. Amen. I met a God who moves and operates in the unconditioned. But most of all, I met a God, amen, who moves and operates. And he's, he's uncompromising. Meaning that, Warren, nothing can separate you from the love of God, amen, not height, nor death, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any creature shall separate you from the love of God, and I praise God this morning, that he is God, and beside him, there is none other, come on, clap your hands this morning, if you believe that, this gift of grace, Nicodemus was in a peculiar place, and Jesus had to bring him focus, to let him know Nicodemus yeah. my grace is so sufficient that I so love people that don't love me yeah. Lord have mercy yeah. that is crazy right there saints when you think about the natural Jesus loved folks that don't love him but he's a God that's not common he's not like the Old Testament gods he's a God who he has eyes that he can see, ears that he can hear. He's a God who feels and touch. Not only he's a God, amen, he loves people that don't love him, but he's a God that when he does what he do, it's unconditional. You can't change it, saints. You know, I could take off this robe. I could put on my gym clothes and go to the gym. And somebody walk up to me and say, ain't you a preacher? I said, how did you know that? I can just tell something about you, something different about you. What are you saying, Pastor? When the anointing of God is upon you, saints, it's upon you. You don't lose the anointing. You may, amen, neglect it. You may not pay it no attention. But the calling still stands. Lastly, praise God that we have a God who's uncompromising what makes him uncompromising because he's a truthful God Amen. that's why he tells us in his word that we should know the truth and the truth will make us free it's uncompromising as much as we sometimes want to believe that a lie is the truth can I tell you saints it's not a lie is not the truth and that's why the preacher of the gospel you have to tell the truth. Why, Pastor? 
Because if you don't preach the truth, the people won't think the truth. Are y'all with me this morning? The word says not to be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove the good and perfect will of God. Pastor, how do you do that? You got to know the truth. Because the truth is the only thing that makes you free. So this morning, saints, I come to give you a gift with a big old red bow on it. And the gift is the gift of grace. And the gift that I'm giving you, it has no uncompromising. It's uncompromising. It's uncommon. But most of all, it's most of all, amen, it does not bring forth anything that God would not give you. And saints, I want you to be encouraged this morning to know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe upon him shall not pay. When I studied this out, amen, a few nights ago, I said, praise God for the whosoever. Because if it had been on for my name, if, it, if, if my name had got me in the kingdom, I'd have never got there. Can I go a step farther? If my name had a... Had a, if, if it had not been for the grace of God, amen, if my name, my name would have never got me to carriers. Come on and say amen. My name wouldn't have brought me here. It had to be the grace of God upon my life. All I'm trying to say, saints of God, when God is for you, for you, the whole world can be against you. But if God is for you, you are going to win all that God has called you out to do. So walk in your gift this morning. Walk in the gift of grace. Knowing that it's uncompromising. Knowing it's uncommon. Most of all, it's unconditional. What God has done for you, can't nobody change it. You don't have to worry about nobody stealing it, taking it away from you. If God gave it to you, it's yours. All he wants you to do now is cherish it and be a good steward over it. That's all he's asking, be a good steward over it. The gift that God has given me is precious to me, saints. I praise God that I've been called to be a preacher in these last and evil days. I praise God that God has given me a podium, a platform, the minister's word. I praise God that God has given me a revelating word. That I can look in the, in the scriptures and see what he's saying for my life and share with other people to see what the, he's showing for you for your life. I praise God for that. I don't take this gift, amen, lightly. I take it reverently, amen. I don't wean when I stand up in the pulpit. I've studied out what God has told me to say. Come on, saints. Come on, clap your hands this morning. Y'all thank God for that. And so this morning, we pray that you would receive the gift of grace. And know that even when we don't love God, he still loves us. Even though, amen, sometimes in our lives we are, we do things, amen, we have conditions on how we want to treat people. God does it unconditional. And even in our lives, amen, amen, we compromise. Amen, we'll compromise based upon whoever it is and how scared we are of that individual. But God don't compromise. He, he's uncompromising. He's a straight shooter. He's right, amen, for the truth that makes us free. And when you receive that gift, Nicodemus, God will do all that he's called you out to do. Come on, stand on your feet this morning. We're going to open the doors, amen. Maybe somebody, amen, maybe somebody that will hear this message. That you don't understand grace. It took me a long time to understand grace. It did. Because I used to be one of those law-abiding citizens. Looked at the word from a law standpoint instead of a grace standpoint. Until God began to start showing me grace. And let me understand, amen, Warren, if it had not been for me on your side, you would not be where you're at. I believe sometimes in the body of Christ, saints of God, many people don't understand grace because sometimes the body can be one of its worst critics. They have that I want to get you mentality. I know nobody in the room is like that. Amen. I'm talking about the body. I want to get you that mentality. But when you have that mentality, you don't understand what grace is really about. 
Scripture says in the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, first read, Brothering, ye who are spiritual, when a brother find himself calling a fault, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness that, they may, that you may be also lightly tempted. That's what the word of God said. The word of God says all of us in the room are subject to fall. And when we fall, we're not here to beat nobody up, but you're there to pick them back up. Why? Because the same temptation that came that person's way is coming back your way. Do you believe that this morning? That's what grace is all about. It's that unmerited favor. It's that favor that, that God shows to us when we don't even deserve it. And so there may be somebody that will hear this word. You don't understand that God is a graceful God. You believe that what you've done, there is no return. Can I tell you something this morning? There is no sin that you and I could do besides blasphemy of the Holy Spirit that God would not save us. God won't forgive us. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit just denying him that he's not real. Everything else, God will forgive you for it. And we need to sometimes hear the body of Christ that God is a God of, of forgiveness. Because as much as we believe we have sins of omission and we have sins of commission, we have knowing sins and sins that nobody else knows about but us. But God is a God who will forgive and cleanse of all sins because he brings the gift of grace. So there's anyone may hear this word, you're not saved. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Romans, 10th chapter, 9th, 10th verse, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in your heart that God is raised and from the dead you will be saved. For, the heart, for with the heart one believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation is here and is knocking at the door, saints. And maybe you're born, you're born again in this room, maybe, but maybe you know somebody who's not born again. I tell you that you ought to go to them and tell them that God came to give the world a gift of grace. Because God loves the world and the world don't even love him. Wow. He loves the world and the world don't love him. We, the church, ought to love God. But the world don't love God. We're, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So God is calling us to be lovers of him. Father, thank you again this morning for your word. Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet, a light unto our pathway. We hide your word within our heart that we shall not sin against thee. Lord, we come this morning and we are so grateful that God, you've given us a gift and the gift is grace. It's unmerited favor, Lord God. It's grace that when we are weak, you make us strong. We bless your name for that this morning, God, that you are still showing grace to the church. And Lord, I pray this morning that we receive your grace. God, I pray that, God, if there's hurt in our hearts, if our spirits, God, are wounded, Lord God, if our minds are preplexed, that, God, we will receive your grace this morning to let us know by faith that you said in your word that, God, that you are greater than he that's in us than he that's in the world. Lord, I thank you for this body of believers right here at Carries. I thank you, God, for every person, Lord God, who has made the commitment, Lord God, to walk by faith and not by sight. I thank you, Lord God, for those that are yielding to the will and the way of God. I give your name the glory and the honor, Lord God, that you keep a hedge of protection over this body, Lord God. I plead the blood of Jesus over them right now in the name of Jesus from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, God. I pray, God, that you keep a hedge of protection around their minds, Lord God. That, God, their minds does not, Lord God, you get distracted on the things of the world. But, God, their minds would always be focused on you. For you say, he who keeps his mind stayed on you, you'll keep us in perfect peace. And so, Father, thank you this morning, Lord God, for you, Lord God, not only keeping this body. But, God, I thank you for how you're going to add to this church. God, you're going to add from the north, south, east, and the worst, Lord God. You're going to add because you said in your word, if you would be lifted up, God, you'll do the drawing. God, we lift you up in this building, God. We lift you up in this house, God. We lift you up in this ministry, Lord God, that you would do the drawing in the name of Jesus. 
God, there's still purpose here at Carrie's Baptist Church, Lord God. There's still purpose, Lord God, in this building. There's still purpose in this ministry, Lord God. And so, Father, I thank you by faith that, God, your hand will continue on resting on this ministry. That, God, we would not grow weary, but we will continue on pressing towards the mark of the higher calling in Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray for all those who are faced with health challenges. All those who are faced with health challenges right now. Your word said you was wounded for our transgressions. You was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement was upon you for our peace. And with your stripes, God, we are healed. So, God, I pray for every member here at Carries that's faced, Lord God, with a, a challenge in their bodies, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for you being the healer in the name of Jesus. Lord, I also pray for all those that are still mourning, mourning over loss of loved ones. God, your word says, blessed are those that mourn, for God, you will comfort them. Thank you, Lord God, that we can put our requests upon you right now and ask God for all those of mourning, that God, you heal their hearts and you let them know, Lord God, that you're a God who knows all. You're a God who sees all. But God, you're God who has all power in your hand. I pray right now, God, for those that are mourning right now. God, that you move on their circumstance and their situation. That they will run closer to you and not far away from you, God. I pray for those that are mourning, God. That God, your will will be done in their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that you said in your word, God, that if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders. You said we ought to anoint their head with oil. And you said the prayer of faith shall heal them. Lord, we are standing in the gap this morning, God. Believing by faith, Lord God, that healing is in the midst of the, of the place right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just bless you and honor you. And I praise you, God, that we can cast all our cares on you. For you cared for us, Lord God. You tell us in your word that man should always pray and not faint. You said the affected from a prayer of a righteous man, it does avail as much. God, thank you. Thank you for hearing our cry, God. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing our prayer. We love you, we honor you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands this morning. You believe.